in the last video about API first design, we saw that there is a specification called Open API specification, which was rebranded from the Swagger specification. Let's see how we can use Swagger Hub in order to create our API design and the documentation using this platform, which is provided by Swagger. Let's get started. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primus. Swagger Hub is a platform for creating the API design and documentation using the Open API standards. Let's try using Swagger Hub to create a simple API for us. I'll just use the try free option by signing up for the free account here. I'll just go to get started for free. If you're looking to create an API specification or a documentation, you can go ahead and try it as well. It's completely free. You just need the GitHub login account. I'm going to use my Tech Primers GitHub account in order to log into Swagger Hub so that I can create APIs and documentations from the Swagger Hub. Clicking on the sign up with GitHub took me directly to the Swagger Hub because I have already linked my Tech Primers with the Swagger Hub. What you can do is you can click the same option. It will ask you to log in using the GitHub account. Since I already logged in, it allowed me to directly go to the dashboard. And once you are in the dashboard, you will have options to create different APIs. Since I created an API sometime back, it's just showing me this particular API or else you should not see this option here. You will be seeing three different options where you will see options to create new APIs, create new domains and create new organizations, etc. In, in this particular video, I'm not going to show you how to create organizations and stuff. If let's say you're working in a startup or you want to create an open source project and you want to manage it like an organization, you can do it from here. I'm going to basically create a new API. If you already have an API specification, you can import it using this option as well. In this video, let's try creating a new API. There are different templates which are available for us by default and also the API specification version can be changed from two to three. If you're working on the latest API specification, you can use three or if you're using the older version, you can flip to the older version. I'm just going to use the latest version of the open API specification and there is an option to choose this template. If I choose a specific template, that particular implementation is going to pop in. If let's say I climp a simple API store, it is going to add me very minimal APIs which are present. If I add the pet store, it's going to give me all the implementations and the APIs which are required for the pet store. What we can do is we can try using the pet store and we can try creating a new API without the pet store. Basically, you can have a none and create one. In the first example, let's try creating a pet store. I'll name the APIs as the TP hyphen pet store. Owner is obviously tech primers. That's our account. The visibility is public. I'm just making this particular um, documentation as public so anybody can view this documentation. If let's say you are creating an API and you don't want anyone to view it, you can make it as private. I'll hit the create API option. This should create the API spec for us. Notice that this is the open API specification. The YAML file is the open API specification and you can see lots of data pre-filled because we expected it to populate an implementation for the pet store. And this is the API documentation of your REST endpoints. So literally this is your spec and based on the spec, the documentation is generated. If you had worked on any REST based implementation, you would have already used Swagger in order to see your documentation. This is exactly the same. The only thing is this documentation is now created based on the specification document. Initially, we used to create these documentation from the code. Now we are going to the next level of creating a specification so that you can share the specification to different teams which are working on these APIs because we might be implementing these APIs, but there could be teams who are going to work on these APIs and use these APIs. That is when the use of documentation and design comes into picture and you can use Swagger or open API specification to leverage that. Now in order to create a simple API, let's try to create a new empty API. 
we already created a TB pet store, but I'm going to create a new empty one so that we can create the specification from the basics. I'm going to select none as a template and we can mention what type of API we want to create. Let's take an example of a stock price viewer. I'll mention the version as 1.0.0. The title for this API should be stock price view viewer API. So basically this is a API where you provide a quote, basically the symbol for a particular stock. And this API is going to return the stock price at this particular moment. Let's create the API. This should create a blank template and we are going to fill in all our data from the pet store that way we will learn how to fill the open api specification as well because if you notice this pet store it has too much of information we are not able to decode what these are right we already have the documentation generated but we don't know how it got generated right so let's try it from the basis here so the open api yaml says open api version is 3.0.0 and there are different information about the project which is basically the version of our product, the, so the stock price viewer. It also has the description and the path. So by default, the, there is no path as such. Also by default, Swagger Hub has added the API auto mocking plugin, which is what is this specific information is for. So we can ignore this as well. And let's start creating our APIs. In order to create the endpoints, you need to create the path for it. If I look at the API specification for the pet store, I see something here. We can use something similar from here and we can paste it and we should be able to see the documentation getting generated. So here what we are doing is see we want to have a endpoint called stock and we will make uh, this as a post. No, we will make this as a get and the request body. I don't want any request body. I want to have a 405 to be returned if it is an invalid response and I want to tag this as stock. The summary is get stock price for a quote so the operation is get stock so this will be the method which will be created when you auto generate this code however you can have whatever method names you want here there is also a security section if you notice which says uh, what is the authorization method so i don't want anything right now i'll just use this so let's try saving this why is it doing let's try saving this document here so the error clearly says that there is a duplicate path. So let's remove this path here and then we'll just save this documentation. So now we should be able to see the stock here. So notice that there is a stock rest endpoint or a path which shows what is the description and what is the tag. Same way if I want to add more methods for it. So let's say under the stock, I want to add methods for post. So the post is for updating the stock price for a particular code. Imagine that we are creating the stock price as well from this API. So you can have a post here. And the responses are also documented here. If let's say I want to give a response for my post saying 201 should be returned as created successfully so this creates a successful stock price for the quote which we have provided now if let's say i want to provide the stock id and retrieve a particular stock notice that we did a mistake here this is going to return all the stocks because when you do a get on a stock we don't have a specific stock quote mentioned in this particular get so i'm going to use the get stocks option here so i'll use this api get stock to return all the stock prices so it says get stock prices for all the quotes which are present in the system and i'm going to create a new path called stock slash id let's try comparing the pet store example Notice that pet store has a similar implementation here, which has a pet ID mention. So we can use the similar one. So this will be a path. 
under the path we need to provide a get method and notice that there is an autocomplete option which comes up while we type so there is a tag which is associated and for the tag we are going to add a hyphen stock so that all these are tagged under the same name there is a summary tag where we are going to mention the description of this particular api get stock price for a specific quote the operation id can be mentioned as get stock the response codes which we want to have are let's say 200 and for 200 we want to return the response saying successful successfully returned so if you want to have it you can have it or else it should be okay or we can have a 401 which says id does not exist quote does not exist so the error here says that the id needs to be defined as a parameter path so stock and this is a quote right this is a quote id we'll mention it as quote id and there is a parameters option here we need to mention the parameters option because this parameters now need to be defined saying i have the quote id parameter to be passed to this particular stock path so let's go to the pet store and get what are the values which we need to provide see that these are the different values so i will just copy this and i'll reuse it here id of the quote to return and it's an integer yes so uh, and if it is optional you can mention it as required as false since it is not optional you are may we are making it as true so based on this our documentation should have got now updated let's look at the documentation so the in should be in the same path as the name so let's move this and let's look at the schema as well okay so schema is fine so i think that was a problem the error is gone now let's save this documentation now let's go to the quote and see what is the parameter which is passed here see that the parameter is now showing up here if i click on the try it out i will have to post this or else this will not execute so this is a mandatory parameter and it is asking me to provide the quote id so if let's say i have my api built i can link it with a swagger hub and i can test it from this swagger hub itself if i want to see only the documentation i can see only the documentation here so this is how you can add the spec and based on the spec documentation can be created and you can create this documentation and you can export it as an html which you can share it with the downstream consumers who are going to use your apis and if let's say you want to create a pojo and you want to work on spring mvc or any rest implementation you can directly create it from here so these are the different options which are available in the free version but let's say if you have an enterprise certificate for swagger hub you will have lots of options here so you have html java java cxf if you are using kotlin client you can create these client sdks if you are using a server side code then you can use spring so if you click on spring this is going to create your spring mvc code for you automatically your controllers are going to be created your pojo is going to be created all these are going to be created from this documentation i just realized that we did not have any stock quote information like how we had the pets how we had it in the pet store here if you notice in the pet store there is a definition of how the pets pojo are if you see here this there is a option called schemas so there is an option called components and inside that you have an option called schemas and using schemas you can define the schema of that particular pojo and you can add it in the documentation itself as a reference so this creates the pojo on the fly so that is why swagger is able to create the pojo because right now we don't have a pojo of the stock price viewer for any of the rest endpoint but if let's say i want to have a pojo i can add the component and i can add the schema definition to it once i add the schema definition i should be able to export this server side code using any of these implementation and i should be able to create the auto generated code from here so this is how you can use swagger hub in order to design and create documentation for your apis using open api specification i hope it was quite useful as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much